Alright, hopefully you can see me first time using my new camera on a tripod, so I'm just having some problems. But I'm making a, decided to make a, another pet invertebrate quarantining video, because the one I did before that's already on YouTube was focusing more on pets that burrow, such as millipedes and centipedes. So if you got a burrowing pet invertebrate, such as most of your decomposers, I will have a link to that in the comments to this video. Go see that. This video is going to focus specifically on pets that spend most of their time off the ground. Or they spend their time on the ground, but they don't really burrow. That way, because I had a lot of information in the comments for those kind of pets on the other video. So I want to erase those. I don't know, putting it here. So... This, like I said, this is for arboreal pet invertebrates. Arboreal meaning they spend most of their time like in trees and bushes. They don't spend a lot of time with their feet on the ground. Um, also terrestrial, you know, they don't climb much, but they do a little bit, but they don't really burrow. And semi-arboreal, which is somewhere in between. So this would be your praying mantids, your stick and leaf insects, tarantulas, and a lot of beetles, that sort of thing. But, okay. Now, to um, let you know, why why do you quarantine? You know, this is a new concept for a lot of pet invertebrate people. Um, and maybe even um, aquarium owners. But you hear about quarantining mostly in the aquarium and in the reptile keeping industry. And it is very, very, very important to quarantine any animal that's going to be kept with other animals that you know are healthy. You want to keep them by themselves for at least a month in a completely different room or across the room because you don't want, you don't know, this new animal that you just got home from pet store it may look healthy, but you may find out five days later it's showing signs of parasites. And if you just put that animal in with your other animals you've had for several months, you just made them all sick and you may end up losing all of your animals, which would be really sad. So quarantining is very, 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 very important. Even if you're keeping the animal by itself and not putting it with others, I still highly suggest quarantining. Quarantining not only allows you to easily check for parasites and diseases and allows you to respond to them quickly and efficiently, but it also allows for you to make sure that your pet is finding its food correctly, especially if you're feeding it something different that maybe the breeder didn't feed it. You want to change food types. But uh, I will have links to pictures of certain things to look for, certain examples, um, and more information if possible. Check the video description. Now, for an arboreal species, you're going to want a container that's tall because they're going to spend most of their time climbing and living up here and not really on the ground. So you want something that's tall. This is about, I think this is about a half a gallon from Walmart. And this was good for my praying mantis until she reached two inches, just to give you an idea of size. If you're... Uh, pet invertebrate spends most of the time on the ground. You're going to want something short but long and wide. And if your animal, you know, spends about 50-50 on the ground, 50-50 climbing, you're going to want something that's about something more square. Um, like, you know, plenty of floor room but some decent amount of space. So, like... It was 50-50 maybe to there for something really small and just as wide, but not nearly as high. And what you want to do is you want to cut holes, ventilation. Ventilation is very, very important for preventing mold and mildew growth. And if your humidity is way too high, it will make your pet sick. I got into that, in trouble with that, you know, for my first week of having my first pet praying mantis way too much moisture in the cage and uh, her feces was really runny which is a bad thing and when you got warmth you got when you got the humidity 
you're also making bacteria grow, which can also make your pet sick. So a lot of ventilation is important, especially if your pet needs a humid condition. Now what you want to do is you want to keep um, all the stuff that you put into your quarantine cage should be disposable. That way, if there is a disease, you can very easily just take it out, throw it out, rinse your, clean your cage out with 10% uh, bleach to water solution, then just put fresh in. It's much easier to get rid of a disease by just doing that than if you have your pet that gets sick already in a fully set up enclosure. Because if you got a disease or mites in a fully set up enclosure, you got to put in all new substrate, you gotta, you're gonna have to soak your wood or your bark pieces or get all brand new would be better. Um, you know, it, there's just, it creates a lot of places for mites and diseases to hide. It's something like that. So this is, this is much simpler. It should be disposable just for that purpose. It should also be stuff that is light in color because the lighter the color the item is, the easier it is for you to be able to see if there's mites or ticks or unwanted pests crawling around your cage. So it's it's very important. So I use paper towel, I just as my bottom or my substrate, I just fold up a paper towel. Um, a lot of people also like to use newspaper. That's fine. As long as it's light in color and you don't mind throwing away. So I just usually use paper towels. I like them. They hold humidity much better than newspaper if you do got a humid environment and it's lighter. Plus you can get some with pretty designs on them. Now, obviously if your pets are boral, which is what this is for, or semi boral you're going to want a place for it to climb on. And I have a lot of great options here. These are just wooden bamboo, bamboo food skewers. And as you can see, they're pretty light. They're a light woody color. You'd be able to see mites and stuff on this. So you would just you just cut this to size and put in there. You can use plastic canvas. I love using plastic canvas. You can get a sheet the size of your standard sheet of paper for like 50 cents or so. 50 cents to a dollar, depending on where you go. It comes in a bunch of colors, so you can get something light that's a little bit prettier if you want some color. But um, the clear, like this, it's clear, clear color, no color at all. And the white would be the best. Um, light grays, tan, like sandy tan colors, um, pastel blue, you know, something that's really light in color and not bright. That's going to be easy is what you need. But I love this stuff. It's just... You would find this in um, the craft aisle with um, yarn, because it's for using yarn on. That's that's where you find it. It's real cheap. And you can just cut like a strip like this. This is a, um, a scrap piece that's already pre-cut for this tank, so this is what I'm going to use. But like I said, light color. You really want something light like this. This is too dark. But you just put that in there and just set it up like that any way you want creates a good 360. It's got little square holes so insects and other invertebrates can actually hook their feet into the holes. And it's about the width. These holes are about the, the width of the diameter end of the skewer. Um, but they can actually put their feet in these holes and, and hook their feet in there for molting. So I find it's really nice and a lot of people use them especially for or praying mantids. Um, another really good idea, again, this should ideally be really light in color, but again, it's pre-cut, it's what I have for the sake of this video. This is just the straight part cut off of a plastic coat hanger. And again, you can get it in a lot of colors. You can go to the dollar store and you can get six of them for a dollar. Um, again, white would ideally be the best for any quarantine set up white is the best but again if you want something prettier you can use a really pale not bright blue or you know a gray or something like that if you'd like but what I did to
to add a little bit more of a foot holding to this so that it could be used for molting and you know your your pet's uh, hair like pieces or projections on the end of its feet can grip to this better and they're not going to you know slide on the smooth surface. I took a high grade sandpaper and I just you know up and down with the sandpaper twisted it around and made this this rough. It's actually got texture. It's it's not it's not smooth. You're probably not gonna be able to see. It's kind of got a whitish to it from roughening it up. And my my praying mantis has successfully molted very easily on this. She really she really liked this. I have an unsteady hand, and she'd be on this, and she wouldn't she wouldn't slip, slide, budge, or or anything. And I could be like you know like this, you know, and it didn't bother her. So this worked out very well for me. You can just put those in there. Cheap, really good climbing places. Um, now on to to hides. You know, it's really good for your pet to have something to hide under, especially if they are semi-boral or fully terrestrial. If you got something that's fully ter terrestrial, you want a place for it to hide on the ground level. Very, very, very important. Something I love to use is a white colored toilet paper roll or paper towel roll, which is what this is from. I love using them. I just cut out, I'll just cut off like a small, a small piece of it, you know, depending on the size of your pet. And you can put it in a hole like this and just set it on the ground if you want. And it'll be a just little circle, like pipe for it to go into. Or if you want easy access, access to your pet for handle training. Cut that in half so you have just a little half moon. So it would just set like that, you know, just like a half log hide that is very popular in the reptile industry would be. And you can just put it in, pick it up, lift it up, you know, very, very nice. Also, what you could do is you could just cut this to length and you could put in the entire paper towel roll at a diagonal like I did with, with my stick. And this would provide um, a climbing place on the outside, and in the inside it would create a hide that would be off the ground, which is really good for arboreal species, because it provides them climbing room and hiding off the ground. But again, if you want easy access to your pet for handle training, this is not the best idea, because if they're in the middle, you're not getting them out very well. So, it, it's up to you. I personally like having easy access to my pet so I can get at them if something's wrong and to handle training so they get used to me when they're a baby before they're an adult and can deliver a pretty nasty bite depending on what kind of pet invertebrate you're keeping. Now if you're keeping a humid environment, if your pet needs a, a pretty humid environment, cardboard is gonna get soggy real fast from all the misting and evaporation and everything. So it'll need to be changed about every two days. So in order for your your hide to last a little bit longer under humid condition, you can just cut a hide out of a standard leak proof, very important leak proof, um, you know, disposable picnic bowl or plate and I say that leak proof because they got like a waxy coating on them which will help hold off the moisture and you know same thing like you did with the toilet paper route just cut out a piece and then you would bend it under to make it lay like this to make your your ground level hide you could also cut out um, a piece like this a really small square piece that curves from a plastic picnic cup. Again, make sure it's white though, or a foam one would work very well, one of the white foam coffee cups, and just cut off, you know, a little square along the side for the bottom. That works very, very well too, even better than the paper plate for humid enclosures, because it is, it's waterproof. Um, another thing you can do that I don't have here to show you would be you could use foam egg carton is a very popular tool for quarantining cages and even for 
just making permanent cheap enclosures because, you know, just buy your eggs and instead of throwing it away, you just keep it, cut it out, and you would just prop it along the side like I did with the plastic canvas. And it would actually create a vertical slant, you know, it would create a climbing surface under and over, and in behind it, since it's against a wall, actually becomes a ground level shelter as well. And the inside of it, you know, the underside of it can also easily be climbed on and, and hidden behind between that and the wall for an above ground shelter for tarantulas and mantids and stuff. Very popular tool, again, comes in some nice colors, though, again, white would be the best, though the, the really light, the lighter blue ones would also be okay, and you could do that as a, as a climbing thing as well, if you want it. Um, if you want it, you can just use, you can use all these, these tips and tricks that I gave you for creating a permanent, very inexpensive enclosure. But once you have quarantined your animal for a week, uh, sorry, not a week, a month, and, you know, they don't have anything weird about them, you know, they don't have, you know, discharge from their nose or their mouth, you know, don't have a crust there, their feces are a normal color and consistency, it's not, you know, bloody or green or yellow if it's not supposed to be, um, it's not consistently running, like occasionally it may be, depending on what they eat. Um, those are just some of the things you want to want to look for, treat it right away. But if they show no signs of being unhealthy after a month, you can move them to a permanent enclosure. You can put them in with other animals for um, without risking that you're going to make your healthy, established pet sick. And at that point, once they're done through the quarantine video, video um, quarantine pit, sorry, period, and you want something inexpensive but pretty, you can again, you can just use plastic canvas pieces, egg cartons up against the walls in the corners, you can use your coat hangers and just use bright colors. You know, they're a very, very good, cheap way to make colored themes, if that's what you like. Um, my mantid is obviously, like I said, I only kept her in here until she reached about two inches and then I had to move her because she got through this. But she's now in a two gallon. And I just, I did the same thing. I used the coat hanger in green. And then I got a $3 plastic fish plant in there. I got plastic canvas along the entire back wall. And I upgraded to um, colored like wash rags or, or hand towels for the bottom instead of paper towels. And I have two of them. So when one gets dirty, dig out, wash it put the other one in. Very simple, very pretty, very cheap, and the entire thing fluoresces under a black light, which was my goal. Just to give you an example of what you can do with these kind of cheap tricks. Um, uh, another point that I forgot to mention is your quarantine animals should always be the last of your pets that you take care of. And always make sure you wash your hands all the way up to your elbows, lather it really good, use the hottest water you can stand, because you don't want to transfer anything, any disease or parasites that your pet may potentially have that you don't know about yet, to your healthy animals. So always take care of your quarantine pets last. And make sure you do not use any tools the same. You know, whatever tools or equipment that you use for your quarantining cages, do not use on your healthy animals. Keep them separate. Ideally, your quarantine cages should be in a completely different room of the house. That is impossible for you. You should at least keep them on the opposite side of the room as far away from your healthy animals as possible because mites will crawl out of the cages and into the other ones if that's what you have. And like I said, if your pet does experience does show any signs of disease or parasites, you just take everything out that's disposable, um, rinse your cage out really good with 10% bleach water solution, dry it, put all fresh in. That'll get any mites or bacteria, germs, anything hiding in every nook and cranny, and you don't have to worry about not being able to get it off your porous things like this. 
whereas there's a lot more places, nooks and crannies, for things to hide in a fully set up tank. And this is, it's much cheaper to just throw out a paper towel, put a new one in, than having to throw out handfuls and handfuls of wood chips or coconut fiber and replacing it every week or so un or until you see that your pet is healthy, the mites are gone, look online for other appropriate treatments for treating your pet directly for whatever the experience, all right? Again, check the comments below. I'll link you to the burrowing, quarantining of invertebrates for your burrowing animals. Obviously very different. And um, see if I can give you some link examples to the disease signs that I mentioned. I'll do my best there, no promises though. All right. And does anyone want to see my mantis cage? I'll take you over there really quickly here. So the camera's going to move. All right, let's go over here. See, this is, this is her, her new cage. That's just pretty much plastic stuff. Very cheap, and she's back there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a bit of a glare, but that little green dot, little green dot is her. Okay, see you, YouTube. If you got any questions, just ask. I'll try to answer them the best I can.